All right, everyone, we start off today with yet more humor. This is probably the funniest story that, you know, we cover all month. Uh, first and foremost, uh, there will be a pinned comment if you're watching on YouTube with links to four other sites that I use for video hosting. Um, <laughs> link in the description. The Democrats are trying to do a switcheroo right now. It's not working, uh, but they're really, really trying hard to make it work. They're trying to become the MAGA party. If this makes any sense, it, 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 people on the left, by the way, uh, intelligently pointing out, this is to their actual credit, uh, the, the MAGA Democrat thing is hysterical. Uh, there are Democrats that want to be more patriotic, more like America first than than the Republicans. I mean specifically the Trump Republicans. Uh, in this particular link here, uh, they're like, oh, well, we've already got a patriot party. It's the Democratic Party. I'm thinking to myself, you have spent decades denigrating the fundamental, maybe more traditional underpinnings of what it means to be American, in, in, in the loose, maybe Reaganite moralistic sense. You can oppose that if you want, but that's sort of the broad underpinning of modern slash quasi-traditional Americanism. It sort of comes from that. Uh, America first would be technically a slogan that you would associate with that. Literally Reaganite in, in form and function. Um, the Democrats don't really stand for for that value, and, and they're trying to take they're trying to turn globalism into Americanism. And it doesn't really make sense. If you have a patriot party in the sense of supporting one's own country, uh, because that would be patriotism, not necessarily supporting the government. I would argue true American patriotism is deeply anti-government in nature. Of course, I'm a libertarian, so I might be slightly biased about that. I think it's patriotic for the government to leave you the fuck alone by and large. I think it's patriotic to leave other people alone. Let, let it be known that the first motto of the United States was not, in God we trust. It wasn't e pluribus unum. For the first couple of years, it was, mind your own fucking business. In not so, <laughs> not so many words, of course. Literally, the motto of the United States, mind your own business. I think we should go back to using that motto. Just saying. By the way, Hail Columbia, a better national anthem than the one that we have now. Just, just saying, uh, there are some things that we changed, especially in the 30s, that uh, aren't great. We outlawed Tommy guns, too. Um, but watching the Democrats try to out-Republican the Republicans, I don't know how great a strategy that is. You see, the problem is they've done this successfully before. What they're doing right now is a Clinton strategy. You had Ronald Reagan uh, emerge onto the set. The Democrats at the time were Carter liberals. It started to fall apart because of economics. Now, this was not Jimmy Carter's specific fault. It was, it was far larger than that. But he was perceived of as weak, and the Reaganites destroyed him. And Ronald Reagan became sort of an American folk hero of sorts, partially deservedly. I'm not part of the Reagan worship cult. I've made that clear. The, Democrat, the Democrats had a problem. Even though Herbert Walker came along and screwed up, for a while it looked like he might get reelected anyway just because he had been Reagan's VP. Then they discovered Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, a smooth-talking, charismatic, at the time relatively young, he was only in his mid-40s, candidate, was able to talk circles around the Republicans and completely destroyed them. He did this by being more Reaganistic than the Republicans by that time. They had degraded away from first-term Reagan and being very optimistic, and they had gotten kind of bogged down with moralism. They had gotten kind of bogged down with corruption scandals. Clinton, at the time, you know, he had plenty of scandals of his own, uh, was able to cover them up because of help from the MSM, he, he schmoozed his way into the office. He did that by doing what the Democrats are attempting to do right now. However, you have a problem. The problem is that Joe Biden is no Bill Clinton. <laughs> Certainly not Bill Clinton a la the fucking 1990s. Bill Clinton, soaring words, best spoken modern politician. B bar none, by the way. When he was at his peak, Bill Clinton was the best spoken politician that we've had in modern politics, certainly in, a, in an executive capacity. Bar none. Now, you can't even compare him to the Bushes. Obama was good with a teleprompter. Once he started cuffing it, it could be a little bit of a problem. Uh, Trump, you know, he could, I could understand what he was saying, but he garbled his words sometimes. Biden... Biden would be at the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> Joe Biden is sub... He, he, you can give him a D-plus for his speaking skills. Because when he's not making a total gaffer error, he can kind of get the point across. The other problem, beyond the charisma, the speaking ability, is just age. Joe Biden is almost twice as old as Bill Clinton was. They're trying the same exact political strategy that worked really well in the 1990s. The other problem is this. 
Because of the internet burgeoning onto the scene, the decline of the Soviet Union, the failure of elements of the Eastern Bloc, the economy and social culture in the West were soaring right along in the private sense. Uh, the government didn't need to intervene very much, and Bill Clinton, yeah, again, to his credit, this is why I give him a 4 out of 10 presidency, largely took a hands-off approach. When he did put his hands on something, whether it was a human being skirt uh, or an issue, he failed. And he knew better than to do that. What is Joe Biden doing? He has delved right into it, ruling in an executive imperialistic fashion from day one. Also, you had the big idea sort of uh, era of Bill Clinton. Uh, to, especially in regards to tech and, and, and Soviet affairs towards the end of his presidency, that falling apart. Um, he actually made uh, attempts to make major changes towards the end, specifically. Until then, he knew well to leave it alone. Joe Biden doesn't really have any sweeping platform uh, ideas except for the ones that he's abandoned. And this has pissed off, by the way, most of the younger voters that supported him because they wanted him to go to the left. Well, he hasn't. He completely cucked on guns. He's done a 180 on deportation and kids in cages and everything else. Uh, and, and his main signature accomplishment so far is destroying tens of thousands of U.S. jobs and endangering the Democrats in New Mexico. By the way, yes, I do believe there will be a, a, a massive red tide uh, come the midterm elections. They're not going to be able to outpatriot the GOP because their leader is inept. And he, he's too old and non-charismatic to make that argument, number one. Uh, number two, the populism thing isn't even part of their platform. The Democrats have re-embraced globalism. When, when Biden says America's back, it's, well, we're going to start bombing people again. We're going to have more TPP-style trade deals again. That's certainly not America firstism. If you want a patriot party, again, I think it would, I, the general consensus, I'm sure, if you ask people this, would be, yes, the U.S. government's primary responsibility is to represent the wishes and interests of the American people. They may differ on what those interests are. At the end of the day, the only way that globalism is being sold to them is as a pig in a poke. It's like the Paris Climate Accords. The Paris Climate Accords are basically a cash grab against the U.S. citizenry. That's what it'll do. It's not going to slow down CO2 emissions. It's just going to move them from the West to China. That's all it's going to do. It's going to help China. It's going to help India. It's going to help a few countries over there. They're going to absorb the industry and therefore the pollution and the low wages. Uh, and, and, and people in the West get fucked because you lose jobs. It's just nimbiest, out of sight, out of mind bullshit. It's not helping the climate any. If you really believe that that's a problem, it's nimbyism. It's a bunch of horse shit. It's, it's snake oil. It's superstition. It's, it's basically suburban liberals don't want the factory in their backyard. They want their air to be clean. They don't care about the air over in China. They, wouldn't want, they, they, they want lots of immigrants to gain residency, but don't resettle them in their suburban neighborhood under any circumstances. That's basically what it's about. That's not patriotism. It's a pile of horseshit. And this is what the Democrats are peddling. I just uh, They've been reduced to ranting about we're more pro-America than the pro-American. We're more American than Trump. Again, let Trump go. He's not in office right now. He probably will be your opponent in the next election. He'll probably beat the shit out of you because Joe Biden's making so many mistakes. Trying to run on a trump light platform plus gun control and globalist trade deals is going to be a fucking disaster. That's about all. Peace out.